is Free Talk Live. You can bring up what you want by dialing the toll-free number brought to you by our friends at SACL CAI. That number is 1-800-259-9231. Again, 800-259-9231. We call the show Free Talk Live because you can dial in and take control of the airwaves. Bring up whatever it is that's interesting to you. Tonight, joining you, it's Ian here. And Nick. And Mark. And you can join us on our website at freetalklive.com. We give you the features all free, so enjoy those on us. Again, freetalklive.com. Let's start things out by talking about Grandma and the SWAT team. Mark, what happened? (laughs) You're never going to... I mean, I, 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 I don't believe it. Um, really? Something yeah. something unbelievable that, and, and awful that the police have done that could possibly top some of the other unbelievable, awful things they've done? You really that shocked at this? From the Washington Times.com, Brian W. Walsh. You don't need to know. You can't know. That's what Kathy Norris, a 60-year-old grandmother of eight, was told when she tried to ask the court officials why the day before federal agents have subjected her home to a furious search. 68 years old. 60 years old. 60. Yep. Okay. Uh, grandmother of eight. You don't need to know. You can't know. National security, ma'am. Looking the for agents terrorists. who spent a half of a day ransacking ah. Ms. Norris's longtime home in Spring, Texas. Did they play some wee bowling while they were at it? But did probably you hear that not story? in front of her. Did, did you hear that story? Just as an aside, the police that were doing a, a raid on a, a so-called drug criminal's house, a drug dealer, they uh, took took some time out from their raiding activities to actually pause and play his Wii, his Nintendo Wii, and for a couple uh, of a hours, frames. if I remember right. Yeah, just different uh, bureaucrats over time, just playing the game. Yeah, all day long, just having fun. Anyway, go go ahead. Um, the agent spends ha- half a day ransacking Miss Norris's home in Spring, Texas. Answered no questions while they emptied. Filing cabinets, pulled books off the shelves, rifled through drawers and closets, and threw the contents on the floor. You know they Roughly. didn't clean up by themselves uh, after themselves. You know that, right? No, they never do. No. They, they're not under any obligation to do that. The six agents, wearing SWAT gear, carrying weapons, were with, get this, the U.S. Fish and uh, Wildlife Service. Really? That's the part that I find the most interesting on this. Federal agents ransacking an old lady's home. I guess I'm 60s, not that old these days, but an a, a older lady's home, I suppose. Yeah. And they're from the game service? Wildlife Fish and, and wildlife service. Fish and wildlife. Yeah. So were they looking for little birds or something like that? We still don't know, right? Sort of. Kathy and Norris lived under the specter of a covert government opera- um, investigation for almost six months before the government unsealed a secret indictment and revealed why the Fish and Wildlife Service had treated their family home as if it were a training base for suspected terrorists. The answer is orchids. What? Orchids. By uh, March 2004, federal prosecutors were well on their way to turning 66-year-old retiree George Norris into an inmate at a federal federal penitentiary based That's her on husband. Yes, on his home-based business of cultivating, importing, and selling orchids. Ms. Norris testified before the House Judiciary Committee on Crime this summer. The hearing's topic: the rapid and dangerous expansion of federal criminal law and the expansion that is often unprincipled and highly partisan. Chairman Robert C. Scott, Virginia Democrat, ranking member Louis Gomet, uh, Texas Republican, conducted a truly bar- bipartisan hearing um, on this. And these two leaders have begun giving voice to the increased number of experts who worry about overcriminalization. Oh, okay, so these are bureaucrats who are concerned about the 60-year-old lady and her 66-year-old husband who have been harassed and they're trying to turn him into a prisoner you said this guy or is he already in prison i I don't think this guy went to prison okay astronomical numbers of federal criminal laws lack specifics can apply to almost anyone and fail to protect innocence by requiring substantial proof that an accused person acted with actual criminal intent Hmm. she i haven't we haven't been saying that for years right so they can just basically say we heard you were dealing in orchids and Mm -hmm. make your life hell Mr. Norris ended up spending almost two years in prison because he didn't have the proper paperwork for some of the many orchids he imported. You need paperwork for flowers. The orchids were were all legal, but Mr. Norris and his overseas shippers who had packaged the flowers had failed to properly navigate the many, often irrational, paperwork requirements the U.S. imposed when it implemented an arcane um, international treaty's new restriction on trade in flowers and other flora. 
The judge who sentenced Mr. Norris had some advice for him and his wife. Sentenced? Okay. So he sentenced to something outside of jail? Yeah. Got it. Uh, the judge's advice was, life sometimes presents us with lemons. He said to, to, uh, to, that it was their job to turn the lemons into lemonade. Was he suggesting there that the government is giving them lemons and that they could somehow spin that into something good? Well, I think it's better than to tell them to go F themselves. I see. You know? Here's your lemons. Get out of here. <laughs> I mean, I can't even imagine a judge saying this. Wow. Well, the judge probably did not, wasn't really too thrilled about having to sentence them to anything. He doesn't have to. What do you mean he doesn't have he to? He could deviate above he if could. he felt like, but he didn't He could feel deviate like above what? He could say, I'm not going to do this. I'm the judge here. I refuse. Do judges have that discretion? Yes, they do. Because I know police have discretion. I didn't know that judges Judges do. have the discretion if they choose to use it. You know, it's interesting. I don't know if I mentioned this on the show, but we uh, somebody posted over at the Free Keen Forum about the rules here in New Hampshire for, and there are probably similar rules elsewhere in the country because they're all very, very just kind of similarly structured. But the rules apparently say that a judge can waive his rules at any time. As long as he has a good reason for doing so. <laughs> and, and as long as it's not prohibited elsewhere in the law for him to uh, waive those rules. It's okay for you to do whatever you want. Right, so it's written there. As long as you think there's a good reason. Right, so it's actually there. I mean, we, we always talk about how arbitrary the system is. The system itself actually admits that it's arbitrary. It actually says, well, we'll just let you do whatever you want. Just go ahead and have a good reason for it. And, of course, who's going to decide whether he had a good reason? Yeah. Well, his buddies on the Judicial uh, Appreciation Committee or whoever they are, the Judicial Watch Committee that doesn't do a damn thing to enforce anything. So, I mean, even if he does decide to waive the rules, even if it's prohibited in their rules for him to waive the rules in that one particular case, who will be the arbiter of whether or not he broke that rule? Nobody who can be held accountable, I can tell you that. Nor is the judge. And the judge in this case apparently failed to appreciate how difficult it is to turn a successful lemonade stand, um, to to run a successful lemonade stand when you're an elderly diabetic with coronary complications, arthritis, and Parkinson's disease serving time in a federal penitentiary. Or when the, the, the police department or the feds in this case come in and decide to upset your lemonade stand every day you try to operate it. And they came in and they tore this woman's house up. And that was after he'd been sentenced? So they're still going after them? Is that what I'm understanding here? I... You know, the, the, this, the, the, the way the story is set up, the timeline is really a difficult. D- difficult for me to figure out. Um, that's what I thought I heard, Nick. Did you? Yeah, that's that? what it seemed like to me. I'm not sure. Okay. Okay. It, does it really matter when they threw, no, threw her curious. house? I mean, just you know curious. they didn't. Uh, you know they threw her house. You know I they assume did they, they threw want. the house when they had a warrant based on the investigation. So I imagine they would have done that at the same time they arrested her husband, though. Maybe. To me, that makes sense. Either way, she didn't get any explanation. And she got to pick it all up herself. Yep. Krister Evertson, another... Sure that was great for her back. Another victim of overcriminalization, told Congress, what I have experienced in these past three, in these past years is something that, I, that should scare you and all Americans. He's right. Evertson, a small-time entrepreneur and inventor, faced two separate federal prosecutions stemming from his work to develop clean energy fuel cells. The feds prosecuted uh, Mr. Evertson the first time for failing to put a federally mandated sticker on an otherwise <laughs> lawful UPS package in which he shipped some of his supplies. A wow. jury A jury acquitted him. So the feds brought up new charges. Oh. This- right. See, double jeopardy only applies on the same charge. Double jeopardy, if I'm not mistaken, is the rule that basically says, well, once you've been tried once for something and it's been thrown out, they can't charge you with that again. That's correct. So... That way they're just coming up with new charges. So well, that's okay. if you've been duly acquitted. I I believe and Mark he was might acquitted by a jury. This. Right in that case he was. But if they simply if it's a mistrial, I don't believe it right, counts. A hung jury it actually count. has to be a verdict of not guilty. Correct. Correct. Yep. So the uh, but that's okay. We'll just find another charge and hit you with that. Yeah. Make it, your it, life just hell. keep on just keep on going after him. You might as well. Right. They have an unlimited budget. The federal government has they they can just keep spending. They'll print up what they need. At least with the state government, those guys have a finite budget. They can't really print their own money at this point. So they have to be a little more cautious about how they go about these things. But the feds, they don't care. They'll just keep going and going and going until you're ruined. There's more to the story here? Oh, yeah. 800-259-9231. What is the term they're using for the uh, overreaching? Overcriminalization. Overcriminalization. 800-259-9231. That's the SACL CAI toll-free line. You can bring up what you want. Coming up, the latest on the marijuana situation in Massachusetts. It's Free Talk Live. 